Now in the second section of our lecture topic we will move on to the management of cervical carcinoma. This management of the cervical uh, carcinoma we will talk about the pathology of the cervical carcinoma how it is prevented and how the cervical carcinoma can be treated. First, the pathology of the cervical cancer. In this, this, uh, this is the microscopic in, uh, appearance and in this you can see the squamous cell carcinoma of the cervix, small cell type. And these are the keratin pearls are present in the cervical squamous cell carcinoma. Then the gross pathology, uh, which is the uh, naked eye, how it looks with the naked eye without the help of the mi uh, microscope. So gross pathology, naked eye. Usually we have the exophytic lesions, ulcerative, ulcers present or it can be infiltrative. It, it, it infiltrates the uh, different structures and different parts. So naked eye appearance or gross pathology is um, exophytic, ulcerative and infiltrative. Then histopathology, that's the histopathology in which we have the keratin pearls uh, uh, of, uh, and then we have the squamous cell uh, carcinoma which is small cell type squamous cell carcinoma. Then prevention of the cervical cancer. Prevention is, uh, it can be primary prevention in which we have the uh, important is identifying the high risk females. Uh, high risk females are like uh, any females with uh, uh, HPV infection. HPV causes the cervical cancer in most of the cases. So high risk females who females with uh, early uh, age at the onset of um, uh, sexual intercourse multiple sexual partners these are very very important factors that leads to cervical cancer so identifying high risk females can lead to early prevention or primary prevention identifying high risk males who have the uh, chances that they might have infection HPV infection that they can transfer to their female partners uh, prophylactic HPV vaccine is important. Then the use of condoms. Use of condoms can prevent the spread of infections. So it's uh, very, very effective in the primary prevention. Also, removal of cervix during hysterectomy. If hysterectomy is performed, cervix should be removed. Uh, that's also uh, uh, primary pr prevention. Then in secondary prevention, we have screening procedures, different screening procedures, uh, which include different uh, tests, uh, uh, biopsies, uh, tests and then MRIs, all these are the different screening tests that can be used for the secondary prevention. Then preclinical lesion stage 1A was the uh, treatment for preclinical lesion in stage 1A, usually the loop excision. If you see, this is the abnormal cell present in the cervix with the wire loop, the, it is inserted and the abnormal cells are removed. That's the loop excision. Small lesions must be removed with clear margin or excision and pre-invasive disease carcinoma in um, uh, cervical carcinoma is, uh, should be excited as cancer is multifocal. So 
pre invasive is cervi uh, uh, intra cervical intra epithelial neoplasia c i n cervical intra neo plastic intra epithelial neoplasia this is a pre invasive disease disease before the invasion so it should be excised so, Preclinical lesion stage 1. In stage 1, the loop wire is used to remove the uh, abnormal cells or cancerous tissues. And in this, it is always uh, good to remove the uh, entire lesion or entire margins. Usually, the fertility is preserved if hysterectomy is not necessary fertility is preserved. Next, the treatment of the clinical invasive cervical carcinoma, which is usually the stage 1b to stage 4, all are now clinically invasive cervical carcinoma. So stage 1b to stage 4, usually the um, depends on usually trachelectomy. Trachelectomy is performed uh, for these stages. Trachelectomy is the uh, surgical removal of the cervix. So uh, trachelectomy. Usually the clinical invasive cervical carcinoma stage 1b to uh, 4 is usually have a high tumor volumes. Tumors now they are big enough. Usually radical hysterectomy and bilateral pelvic node dissection. Radical hysterectomy, hysterectomy is done to uh, remove the um, uterus and bilateral pelvic node dissection is performed. Radical trachelectomy, also radical trachelectomy is the removal of the uh, cervix. In this we have, this is the trachelectomy. This is the part that's removed. So radical trachelectomy and bilateral pelvic node dissection in young women. Young women who want to uh, retain the fertility, uh, it's better to perform trachelectomy instead of hysterectomy. Stage 2 to 4, usually the radiotherapy, then surgery uh, problematic with complications. Uh, so what type of surgery is performed? The preferred treatment is the surgery. Uh, usually the surgery is we have, uh, as we mentioned in the previous slide also, the radical hysterectomy and pelvic node dissection is performed. So in radical hysterectomy, this is the uterus. So this uterus is removed uh, along with the cervix and right and left uh, pelvic node dissection parametrium here. So this is the hysterectomy. Also the removal of cervix, upper third of vagina, uterus and paracervical tissue. This is the cervix, upper part of the vagina and the uterus and parametrial tissue or paracervical tissue. So surgery, preferred treatment, what type of surgeries are performed? We can do radical hysterectomy along with pelvic node dissection or we can do removal of the cervix which is trachelectomy, upper part of the vagina, uterus and paracervical tissues all are removed. Again, depending on the age, depend on the staging of the cancer. If ex extensive and it already invaded or it spreads, we have to go uh, deep and more aggressively. So we should uh, try to save the patient. 
pelvic nod node removal which nodes are removed obturator nodes internal nodes external iliac nodes lymph edema is there usually because of involvement of the lymph nodes there is pressure and it can cause lymph edema or swelling due to obstruction in the flow of the lymphatic fluid the management of lymph edema is elevation of the leg, uh, good skin care, massage, compression, stockings are used for the management of uh, lymph edema. So all these surgery is the preferred treatment and we can perform two types. One is hysterectomy and pelvic lymph node. One is more extensive in which cervix and upper part of the vagina is also removed. Involvement of the lymph nodes um, leads to lymphedema and there is, um, uh, it is treated by leg elevation, by compression stocking and by skin care and massage. Next, radiotherapy. R radiotherapy deliver a le lethal dose of radiation to the tumor and it minimizes the uh, damage to surrounding tissue. External beam radiotherapy, which is also known as telepathy. Then we have internal radiotherapy, which is known as brachytherapy and then lethargy with bowel and bladder urgency is uh, can occur with the radiotherapy radiation hazard if the patient is on the radiotherapy for a long time there are very bad serious radiation hazards which can cause fibrosis Vaginal stenosis. Vaginal stenosis or narrowing of the vagina can occur and this can lead to sexual pain and bladder damage. Radiotherapy also induce menopause. Then palliative treatment. Besides surgery, besides uh, radiotherapy there is palliative treatment palliative treatment is the treatment that is given to improve the uh, life of the patient different uh, conditions are treated as the patient complain to improve the life of the patient usually the uh, palliative treatment it, typically administered in hospital or in other nursing facility. Meets both the patient's psychological and spiritual care needs. Psychological uh, treatment or behavioral therapy and psychological therapy is very, very important at this stage and it is a part of the palliative treatment. Uh, provide support to the patient's family, encourage and help the patient to live as active as possible until the death, address the need of the patient and family through a team-based approach. And then we have uh, medical supplies are usually uh, provided to the patient. It's important that the uh, patient should be aware of how much coverage is provided by the insurance, what supplies are provided by the insurance and uh, uh, these kind of things, whether the inpatient treatment is covered or whether the outpatient treatment is covered. So insurance information is very important because uh, we don't want to build the patient too much. So that was all about the uh, uh, cervical management of the cervical carcinoma. Thank you for watching scardia.com.